Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the Judiciary Committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today. My name is Leo Payne, and I come before you today as a private citizen of the state of Georgia. The purpose of my testimony is to provide you with a real-life situation of the impact of the forfeiture law on the state of Georgia and how it has allowed overzealous prosecutors and police overreaching authority that results in the victimization of law-abiding citizens. I've got some prepared remarks that I'll provide with you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on September 11, 2008, without my knowledge, I was indicted and charged with a crime that I did not commit. The charges were completely false, had no basis in fact, and were ultimately dismissed. However, because of those unproven charges, the District Attorney of Fulton County had the legal authority to choose all of my assets. It hurts. My daughter's college fund and a bank account with the bank's wife. I hated that because it cost my daughter her college education at that time. They also placed liens on my house and were attempting to seize automobiles that were registered under my name. The lawyers who were paid a commission based on the amount of funds and assets that they seized invaded my home under police protection to assess the assets of their potential hall. All this without what I considered due process. I never knew that this was going on until after the fact. <coughs> The impact of this seizure was to deny me the ability to use the financial assets that I'd earned lawfully in the pursuit of my business. To rob my daughter of her college day. I was unaware of the seizure for days and continued making payments on the normal course of events. However, checks began to bounce due to not sufficient funds. I couldn't pay for the food from the daughter. I was unable to make the house payments, pay utility bills, buy food, and put gas in the car. My daughter was forced to live with relatives that were closer to school so she could get back to and from work and hate fed her. All this because of overreaching legal authorities decided to seize assets under the law that denied citizens of the state of Georgia due process. Furthermore, without funds, I was unable to defend myself. Luckily, I was fortunate enough to locate Stephen Byrne, who agreed to take a retainer from my uncle and my pastor to allow me to have proper representation. All criminal and civil actions were vigorously defended, and to that end, a motion to dismiss was filed in a civil matter contesting the seizure of assets and alleging the seizure was without merit, lacked evidence, and I was innocent of all charges. It took me three months to gain a hearing in civil court to secure the release of all my assets. During these three months, my house was subject to foreclosure. I couldn't pay my daughter's funds. I couldn't pay my utility bill. In addition to that, the district attorney chose to use my, old, my own funds and hold them over my head in trying to get me to plead guilty to something I didn't do and agree to a forfeiture of my own funds. I steadfastly refused to do that. I refused to give in to something that was not correct and lacked evidence. The district attorney was, or, was using my own money to produce not justice, but a victory on his record. I steadfastly refused to accept any deals, even though Stephen presented them quite frequently. Give up $10,000, give up $20,000, agree to do this, agree to do that. No, I'm not going to do it. I did nothing wrong. Were it not for the generosity of neighbors and relatives, I'd have been homeless. It hates me, it hurts me about my daughter. When I told her about the loss of the fund and the possibility of leaving college, she said, Daddy, I'll be okay. But what about you? You've had two heart attacks. How are you doing? She could kill us about what happened to her. I told her, I said, Caitlin, they can beat me, but they cannot defeat me. I will win in the end, no matter how hard the effort. <coughs> and without help of a proverbial rich uncle and a kind pastor, I would not be able to find competent defense, counsel to defend myself. When I did get my day in court, the judge ordered the district attorney to produce evidence of any violation of the law. This was the same judge that signed the order to seize my properties. A hearing before this same judge. 
the district attorney was unable to produce any such evidence and the civil case was dismissed. The judge ordered the district attorney to immediately restore all funds, release all liens. However, the district attorney's office dragged their feet and had to be pressed into releasing my funds, my own money, releasing the funds and the liens. In my opinion, this was a further abuse of power and stretching the over, overly punitive power of the current forfeiture law. I'm a History Channel buff, and many times I've watched videos and documentary, documentaries on the atrocities committed by the Nazis against the Jewish people in Europe. They seized their properties, monies, and forced them out of the homes. In September 2008, I learned firsthand what it was like to live under that environment. If the law continues to remain on the books, and you deny people the basic <coughs> rights which our forefathers fought and died for, rights which my family and friends fought and died, fought and died for, then I think you're doing an injustice. I certainly have no problem with taking money from drug dealers and providing weapons and vests to the police force, but I think you ought to convict them first, and I think you ought to make sure they get their due process. I don't care who they are. I'm a veteran of the U.S. Navy. I've served my country honorably to defend rights. I'm a law-abiding citizen who respects authority in the government system that we have in the United States. However, I cannot believe that the current forfeiture law is part of those values and beliefs. In my business career, I've served the citizens of Georgia, Louisiana, and the United States to the best of my abilities. I've been responsible for refinancing billions of dollars of utility company debt that reduced rates for, for consumers in those states for decades. I was a key player in the privatization of a portion of the Manhattan Project that returned $3 billion to the U.S. Treasury. I've been a responsible citizen. Recently, I created a youth program for church, raised funds for developmentally delayed adults, and created a nonprofit charity for autism. I do not deserve to be treated in this manner to have my assets seized and my rights trapped. Today, I've been cleared of all charges and I'm trying to move on with my life, but I occasionally have nightmares of cars pulling up in my house and overzealous public officials seizing everything that I've worked for and served my country to defend. Members of this Judiciary Committee, I urge you to consider changes that will protect the rights of citizens and give them their due process and protection under our laws. Thank you. God bless Georgia and God bless America.